The Small Rural Hospital Transition Project, or SHIRT for short, supports small rural hospitals nationally by providing on-site consultations and education to bridge the gaps between the current healthcare system and the emerging healthcare delivery and payment system. SHIRT works with selected hospitals to identify and disseminate financial, operational, or quality improvement best practices and successful strategies to share with other rural hospitals and network leaders. We're a small rural community in southeast Georgia about 11,000 people in our county, 5,000 in the city. Our hospital is a critical access hospital and we have an attached nursing home that's 88 beds, a daycare center with 158 children, two rural health clinics, and we have five employed physicians. In this rural community, we are the largest employer. Our patients are our employees. They're our employees' friends and family members. And so what that allows for is the ability to coordinate with the community, to be able to engage with our community members. The whole overarching thing with the whole concept of population-based health was really to take the time to look at what populations we have. Um, we're working specifically project-based with about 10 populations with over 30 um, performance measures that we have very high benchmarks for. And Every recommendation that was made through this CERT project was in some way, if implemented, applied to one of those populations. We were able to have two lunch and learns. Each of them had about 100 people come and attend. If you don't know what the community needs, you're trying to provide services that they may not need or want. So you had better involve your community. After all, they're your client base. You don't have a reason to get up and go to work without them. It sounds crazy to say that as a business that we don't want people in our hospital beds, but we don't. We want to keep people healthy. We want people to utilize our two rural health clinics, utilize our primary care services. One of the populations that we focus on a lot um, is our pre-diabetics. We are all about preventative care and at least within our primary care population, about 10% of our patients have a diagnosis of diabetes. So what we wanted to be able to do was prevent that. And so what we just implemented was the CDC's National Diabetes Prevention Program. And we're starting that with our employee population. And after the year of offering that program to those pre-diabetics, it's then going to roll out into the community. I think another outcome that we're really proud of I think it's our patient satisfaction, our patient experience. Our patients have rated us number one in patient satisfaction and patient experience in our region. For the national benchmark is 75%. And our hospital, we are proud to say, is at 88%. That was an outcome that I think was a direct result of the CERT project. One of the areas that we decided to focus on was the swing bed program that we currently have. And the biggest focus I think we did was individualize that program and make it all about them. Also, we promoted a passport home pamphlet and even our patients that we transferred out of the hospital, we knew they would be coming back to the community um, maybe in a few days. And what this did, it told them all the services that we would offer when they were ready to come back home to our community. The readmission teams and the swing bed teams kind of worked together and the team name was There's No Place Like Home. And that's what we portrayed to our people whenever we would transfer them out for different services that we want you to come back home and there is no place like home. 340B went live with us, uh, June was a year ago. So we've been going for a little over a year and uh, have realized almost $130,000 worth of savings. So it's been really significant. We were able to, to realize those savings and reinvest them in ourselves and our community. Our upfront collections, we challenged our admissions clerks to work together with our back office team and our case managers to gather the correct information at the time of admissions to lower our denials as well as our upfront collections. We set a goal of a million dollars and they didn't think they could reach it, but they did the first year they collected $1.3 million. So we had a big celebration. Our net AR days went down from 47 to 41 days. 
so that was, a, again, a team effort. Within each recommendation, there was also a bullet point that really had to do with the idea of marketing. One thing that was consistent throughout the recommendations was people got to know. They have to know what services you provide. If they don't know, then they're not going to be able to utilize them and it's not going to be successful. We developed rack cards, a one-page card for emergency room, a one-page card for radiology, for each type of service that we have and we put those out into the community and it helped internally and externally to market our services better. Our brand is You're In My Care and um, our employees, it's the best market tool we have, our employees were called and named brand ambassadors and uh, we videoed them um, saying the new mission and vision and what it meant to them, sent that out on Facebook and the different areas around the community. It gave the employees more of ownership. When we had our huddles within the organization, um, those brand ambassadors were the people who were speaking and who were pushing that mission and vision because we knew we had to get the frontline staff involved. The SHARP project led us to embrace lean as our um, operating model. A lean organization understands that value comes from several initiatives, one of which is to reduce waste. We challenged all of our department directors to come up with a lean charter and a lean project. We had over 20 charters developed and successfully implemented. They all have an impact on patient care or finances. For us, success in this, uh, I guess, population-based strategy is performance agreements with payers. And if we're having good outcomes, that gives us the ability to go to payers and say, these are our results. Let's now enter into a payment agreement contract. Before, we were not prepared to be able to go and have that conversation to negotiate contracts. And through the CERT project, we now are. What we are doing for our patients is something worth purchasing. Something that the SHIRT project kind of gave us awareness of was really the opportunity that advanced payment models can have on quality of care and decreasing overall costs. And so for us, next steps looking forward is being able to move into those um, risk uh, full risk and uh, cost sharing payment models that before we never would have considered. What we found is that as far as the need, it was an access need. There is no access to primary care, primary or convenient care after the hours of 5 p.m. and on weekends. And so what we have or had was a large misutilization of our emergency department. Um, actually within one year, when we looked at all of the encounters, 90% of all encounters could have been seen in a more appropriate setting. And so what we have done is offer extended hours, now open until 9 p.m., and we're offering Saturday hours, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Within six months, our after hours volume exceeded our daytime volume. So what that said was the community does need that. I think the, the project will continue. I mean, it's become part of our culture, so it's become the norm. So that kind of gives us a roadmap for the future. So how are we going to sustain or hardwire the achievements that we've made? Staff is the key. Um, the culture of ownership really drives that sustainability. Um, if you hardwire your organization to these processes that we have put in place, it will be sustainable and we can go forth to increase the quality of patient care and continue to serve our community as we do now.